G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with another Lewis Hamilton Time Trial Challenge Diamond Lap and Track Guide by myself, Smokescreen. So here we go, around Suzuka this time, Suzuka Circuit. Uh, it's actually, for me, personally, I felt as though this one was the most difficult one. Um, you know, I just, I don't get on with Suzuka that well, I tend not to be that quick around here, I just struggle with this track. Um, I, I don't quite understand how to get a quick lap time here, and that's something I'm going to have to practice tr practice a bit more, but uh, I feel as though the recent Red Bull beat the Pro Challenge around this circuit in the Super Formula, that I felt kind of helped me with trying to get lap time out of this circuit. The Super Formula car, you, you can rely so much on the car to do a lot of the work. Uh, I felt that due to that, I was able to focus on myself a bit more, I was able to take some brain power used to control the car and focus it back into how I tackled the circuit. And I felt that did quite improve my skill around here. Because I jumped on this, I had been trying to get this for months. Or, well not months, but I had had a couple of several hour long sessions here. I've gotten as close to a 58.518, which is exactly one hundredth of a second slower than Lewis Hamilton. I was able to get that, but I just couldn't go any quicker and I've stepped away from it for a while but I did the Red Bull beat the pro I was able to beat Max Verstappen and Alex Albon by quite a lot not that their laps were that great but I was able to sort of focus a lot of energy into that and I've learnt that Suzuka is is about being gentle you it's not you can't attack it like other circuits you can't be aggressive you've really got to be gentle go with the flows of Suzuka and pretty much after an hour and a half I was able to beat I was able to achieve this lap time here so you can see coming through uh, 130R or about half a second up at this point on Lewis Hamilton and coming into the Casio triangle the final chicane uh, you can see here you can cut that second part of that chicane by a lot more you can pretty much be a car width further to the left than I was and you could be narrower on the on uh, through turn 18 along the pit wall. Wow. But Where at the end, from? we got a good exit out of the chicane, a 158.4, as opposed to Lewis Hamilton's 158.508. So, a little over half a second. Uh, a little over half a tenth, sorry. Imagine half a second, that'd be mental. But now we're going to follow the formula of all these videos here that I do, that I've put together, and we're going to go through a nice, slowed-down version of my lap. I'm going to point you through all of the tips tricks, breaking points, turning points, markers and references, etc, uh, etc, et that I use to get a good lap time around here. You saw uh, that rendition of the chicane on the start of the lap as we start before the chicane. That's how you ideally want to take it. We miss doing that on this lap, but it's not to worry. We'll just follow turn one, which is this fast left-hander, just on the 50 meter board. Just break, half break, 50% brake pressure, turn it in nice and gentle through turn one. You can meet that curb on the outside if you like, or you can stay a little bit narrower and then come for this later apex of turn two. You can see there's a corner marker, boom, center of the car, how good's that apex there? Power application, nice and smoothly on the exit of turn one. You don't want to go so far wide to touch the grass, but you can see through turn one, one, uh, 1 1.3 tenths up on Lewis Hamilton at this point. So there's plenty of time in this lap, turning in just on the curb, there. The S's are kind of, you just go with the flow, I don't really have braking points or anything for this section here. Just nice and gentle, third gear, try not to go so far to the left like I did, onto the power only when the car's pointing straight, are you going to spin out uh, through this turn here, this is turn 5, up onto the green portion inside that curb, but it pulls the car around the corner, you can see we gained a little bit on the exit there, now as you head through turn 6, it's downhill, slightly off camber, you can see we're going to go down into second gear, and then meet that curb very very late in the turn there. Uh, Dunlop curve turn 7 uh, is a left hander so we want to be far onto the right to get a nice fast flowing run on the entry here. Lift off early and meet that apex early in the corner as you want to be accelerating on the exit of the corner here. It's uh, followed by a little bit of a straight before the Degners. Uh, so you want to get a nice exit on there. Um, I was able to get so far as to be one tenth ahead on the exit of Dunlop so I'm um, about even with him at the moment so it's about this is about a tenth slower than my fastest 
Uh, but as we f go into the Degna, just on the sort of black fla flag marker screen, hanging on the fence on the left-hand side just before the 50 meter board brake, go down into fourth gear and then brake just about a car, two car lengths before the end of the curb on the left for Degna 2. Degna 2, I'm very weak through this corner for some reason. I'm just, just not able uh, to match Lewis Hamilton through there. So I can, uh, so, so I do lose a bit of time, about a tenth of a second. You can see we're nearly a tenth or we're over a tenth up it will be shortly there we go over a tenth down on Lewis Hamilton at this point but there's a couple of portions later in the lap where you can gain on him easily coming into the hairpin just before the end of the curb on the right hand side this is an ultra 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 slow hairpin I cannot enforce how much you have to over slow the car for here very very tight hairpin you can probably even dab the handbrake if you feel confident enough to do that on the exit we get a little bit of a portion of oversteer there, and I am able to correct it fairly quickly. This is a part of the track where you can gain, because Lewis Hamilton does a similar thing if you have a look at his lap in game. He gets a portion of oversteer on the exit of that hairpin there. If you can avoid uh, that oversteer, which is easy enough to do, I've just got a little bit eager, uh, um, you can gain quite a bit, like I'm talking over a tenth as we head through turn 12 before Spoon, and then uh, as we go through 130R, you can gain quite a bit more as well. Uh, we're going to come up towards Spoon. The braking point is easy, although you break slightly before uh, the bit of tarmac strip halfway between the 100 and, 100 and 100 and the 50 meter boards. About halfway through between those, just before the tarmac in between them. Third gear for the first part of Spoon, that's turn 13. Meet out into the curb, and just as you meet the curb on the brakes, I had a little bit of overlaying there. Didn't it's not intentional, but I guess it keeps this car stable. And then meet a nice late apex. Have a look at my throttle trace. Nice and gentle there on the exit. It drops downhill on the exit of Spoon, so it's quite easy to oversteer. But once you meet that curb, the car grips up nicely as the downforce uh, elevates. The downforce sort of stops the car from moving around as you begin to gain speed out of there. Uh, heading up the back stretch now. Uh, 130R is coming up, so 130R in sort of regular Group 3 in your daily races, certain cars can probably go through 130R flat out, um, this car definitely not, so we have discussed, this is the Mercedes AMG GT3 of course, using 100-100 BOP, uh, therefore it's very very understeery, so it is quite a significant lift, so as we go past the 50 meter board, I go off the throttle all the way, 100% off the throttle, completely coasting through 130R. No braking required, of course, but just off the throttle. You can see through there, we were about half a tenth down. We're now half a tenth up. So we gained a tenth going through 130R, and I didn't even take it that well. Braking just before the 100 meter board into the Casio Triangle, the final bit of sequence here. Coming into the first part, this is turn 16, half the car up onto the kerb, that's all you can do, otherwise you get a cut track penalty. This second part, I got a little bit of oversteer off the first part of the chicane, I wasn't able to get it into the second part as nicely as I would have liked, but you can get all the way up onto the kerb, you can get sort of all four wheels onto the green astroturf inside the red and white kerb. And then you can keep it tight through turn 18, I kind of come back late and I do gain a little bit, but we come across the line 158.446, so that's how I achieve that. Of course, there's plenty of time in this lap. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm not coming out saying that I'm the quickest, but this is a quick enough time for you to reap the rewards of beating Lewis Hamilton. As far as I'm concerned, if you can beat Lewis Hamilton, you know, if you beat Lewis Hamilton by one one thousandth of a second, you get the exact same reward as beating Lewis Hamilton by three seconds. So, at the end of the day, beating him is beating him. So that's why I've decided to settle with this lap here. We're now going to go through a full speed lap of my uh, example lap here at Suzuka. Looking on the left hand side for turn one, just on the 50 meter board. 100% brake momentarily and then 50% brake all the way to the apex of turn two. Long braking period through there. We gain a tenth, tenth up at this point. Now we tip it into the snake section, turn three, turn four, just keeping the car nice and balanced and meeting and hooking up those apexes. Turn five, get up onto that curb, it pulls the car around. Turn six, down into second gear momentarily, late apex, so you're on the right hand side for your left hander coming up of turn seven. Get off the power nice and early, get the car ready to go through the corner at full throttle. You don't want to be lifting sort of halfway through the corner, get your lift done before. Uh, black box before the 50 meter board down into fourth and then for Degna two just a couple of car lengths before the end of the 
of the kerb on the left hand side down into second gear try and get a good launch I don't hairpin just before the end of the kerb on the right second gear or first if you feel like that's necessary and try to avoid this oversteer here that I end up getting try and avoid that and you'll get a much much better exit you can potentially gain about two tenths on Lewis Hamilton uh, one and a half tenths probably more realistically as you, go, as you go through turn 12 looking on the right hand side here just before the tarmac strip in between the 150 meter boards third gear for turn 13 just as you meet the curb on the right down one more gear into third gear and then nice and gently onto the power for the exit onto the back stretch we're gaining slightly about eight one hundredths of a second down however but coming up towards 130 uh, Lewis Hamilton doesn't take the best run through here just after the 50 100% off the throttle but no break whatsoever and then onto the power on the exit looking on the left hand side just before the 100 meter board second gear for the second part of uh, the first part of the chicane rather and then for the second part uh, you can completely cut that m much much more than I did and then try and keep it really tight through turn 18 I understand steer wide but I managed to bring it back and gain a little bit of time wow. 158.4 and that my friends is how I finally was able to beat Lewis Hamilton at Suzuka circuit one of my one of my dud circuits I really don't have that much fun with Suzuka but I was fairly motivated to beat Lewis Hamilton despite not really liking the circuit as it's only one of two circuits on which I have to beat Lewis Hamilton on yet but that's going to round out this one today. Do leave a comment and let me know if this was able to help you get closer or further beat Lewis Hamilton. Uh, do leave a like if you liked it and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. But that's the end of this one today and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.